Someone once told me that if my pictures aren't good enough, I'm not close enough. caffeinated and it's super late but i'm up making videos for you guys because i love you that much today we're going to talk about gear but before we get into that let me have you guys take out your phones type that into your instagram and uh follow me so you guys can stay updated on all the cool stuff that i'm doing and the different things that i'm going to be testing for you guys uh right now we are going to talk about probably the most peculiar lens in my collection and actually one of my favorites it's right up there with my 35 millimeters Simicron Spherical. Why do they have to make the names for these lenses so damn long? Uh, anyway, we're gonna talk about this guy right here. Hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, this is my absurdly long named Leica 21 millimeter Super Angulon F 3.4. And I absolutely adore this lens. Now, I got a couple of comments on the last video, uh, namely, how to be invisible as a street photographer, and how do I get closer with a rangefinder? And that's kind of been one of my caveats, at least the latter one anyway. Um, the invisibility thing, we'll get to that in the next video because, uh, spoiler alert, it's not a thing. But as far as getting closer, that has been one of the rangefinder camera's weak points. Getting closer with a rangefinder just really isn't possible uh, because most rangefinder lenses, and I'll pull out this uh, amazing 28 millimeter Summicron is spherical. The closest focusing distance on this lens is about two and a half feet or 0.7 of a meter. And that might sound close enough for some of you. A lot of people, it's just not close enough, particularly when you're trying to add drama and depth to a picture. So today we're going to talk about the reasons why I love this lens. And the first one, let me look at my notes. Oh yeah, that's right. It's the price. Most Leica lenses are going to come in between $1,500 and can go way up past $10,000. Uh, a lot of them are absurdly priced and some of them justifiably so. I mean, a lot of them are very unique uh, and very sharp pieces of glass. But at the end of the day, unless you're pixel peeping, a lot of times it just doesn't matter. Of course, sometimes Leica lenses have a certain look, but you can get away with paying far less money for just as good glass. I know there's a lot of snobs out there that only want to use Leica branded glass, but let me tell you, I've used a lot of third party lenses and they are spectacular. Uh, but it's kind of like comparing a Honda Civic to a Ferrari. That Honda Civic is going to run and it's probably going to get you more places than that Ferrari. But it's nice to say that you have a Ferrari and pull it out of the garage or the safe every now and then. Uh, however, you'll get more practical use and you won't feel bad about beating the hell out of the Honda Civic. So, uh, I strongly advocate for third party lenses and or the less expensive lenses like this one. Now, if you're lucky and you win at eBay, you can find this lens right under $1,000 for a really nice copy with the finder. That's going to come in probably around $1,500 to $1,700, but that's chump change when it comes to Leica lenses. Uh, the current 21 millimeter offering uh, goes for well over $2,000. And if you go for the F1.4, uh, count on not putting your kids through school. Uh, so I strongly suggest you take a look at the F3.4 version, uh, the older version. This one's from actually, uh, this one's actually from 1964. And uh, it works just as good as any other lens currently on the market. The second reason I love this lens is that it's a 21 millimeter. And that means I get tons of context when I make pictures with this. Now, normally ultra wide or super wide lenses like this 
are better suited for our uh, landscape photographers or architectural photographers, particularly real estate photographers when you're photographing interiors. Uh, but I've learned that if you're on the street or you're making portraits with this lens, uh, particularly atmospheric portraits, this lens really shines. And there's a whole lot you can do with this lens that say a 28 millimeter or a 35 millimeter won't allow you to do. You'll get a ton of information with this. You'll be able to get the foreground, the background, just about everything in focus. And if you get really close, you'll be able to create some really cool dramatic effects with this without getting any of the distortion. And that goes into my next reason for loving this lens. It is rectilinear. Now, again, if you're an architectural photographer or a landscape photographer, that's going to mean a lot because everything out to the edges of your photograph, all the lines are going to be straight. There's no distortion. There's no curvature that you get with a lot of other ultra wide offerings. Uh, really, everything just looks the way it should. Now, if you're really into architectural photography, I'm pretty sure you own a couple of tilt shift lenses or things like that, or uh, maybe even go up to a four by five camera or an eight by 10, something that you can have movements with. But if you want something that you can just throw over your shoulder and photograph the world around you, this right here is it. Now let's get into the real reason I fell in love with this lens and that's its ability to allow me to get close. Now again, rangefinders have this kind of fault in which they won't allow you to get close. Uh, you're primarily limited to about two and a half feet. And I mean, I don't know if you're in a room with somebody, but maybe get two and a half feet from somebody. You're going to feel extremely close, particularly right now in 2020, because COVID is a thing and we're supposed to stay six feet apart. But, you know, two and a half feet in terms of photography can be pretty far away, especially if you're using a very, very wide lens like this. And uh, the ability to get 16 inches away, especially at 21 millimeters, when everything's going to be in focus and you get that extreme depth of field, that's incredible. I mean, I've gotten way closer than comfortable uh, with this lens, particularly to strangers out on the street. And for some reason, maybe it's because I'm using an old looking camera or something like that. They don't mind it. Uh, it actually, it's a really cool icebreaker when I tell somebody, all right, I'm going to get really in your face. Uh, or, you know, I focus in on the details that, of the things that they're wearing. Um, it's, it's really interesting to see people's reaction to this uh, lens or what it can do. Uh, but for the most part, I get pretty positive responses and being able to get that close kind of catches people off guard, but it's something they're not used to in the best way. I mean, you see a lot of people out here with cameras and they want to stand down the street or what have you. Um, it really is interesting to watch people's reactions when someone is willing to get close to them and, and they feel seen and appreciated. You know, when I walk up to somebody and say, hey, I'm really digging that necklace or I like the rings or, you know, hey, can I photograph what you're holding in your hands? That looks pretty cool. It lets people know, hey, I see you. And it's not I'm not just objectifying you. I'm not just across the street saying, oh, that person, there's a person snap. Uh, I really like to get close to people and experience what they're experiencing. Um, and with that said, this lens really does kind of give the illusion that when you're looking at a photograph, you're right there in the action. You're a part of that picture. Even if you weren't there, have no idea what's happening, you're thrown right into it when a photograph is made to the limit that this thing can get close. Uh, so that's really uh, this lens's strong suit. This is That's where this lens shines is when you're close, when you're super close. This lens has caused me to get out of my comfort zone. And I've always been comfortable with people providing I have a camera in my hand, but I've never really needed to get that close. And I think because this lens allows me to do that and no other lens that I own does, it really makes me, every time I put this lens on, want to kind of exceed the limits of what my brain thinks is possible with the lens or with a rangefinder in my hand. So of course, being a 1964 rangefinder lens, as wonderful as this thing is, as sharp as this thing is, as versatile as this thing is, it does come with a few quirks, um, particularly in this area right here. I don't know if you guys can see that right in there, that rear element. But because this lens allows you to get super close, it did have to kind of give up something. And that's its ability to use TTL metering. The way this lens allows you to get close is that this rear element is recessed into the camera body. So if you have a Leica M5 or CL or M6, M7 or anything like that, uh, even an MP, 
you cannot use TTL metering with this. And that's fine, you know, you don't need to meter. Um, there's actually a kind of a trick that I use. I'll load 400 speed black and white film in my camera. I will rate it at ISO 1600 kind of in my head and I'll shoot everything at F8, maybe at 250th of a second during the day. If I develop that film at ISO 800 or for ISO 800, pretty much everything's properly exposed. And if it's not, it still looks cool. It's kind of hard to mess up 400 speed black and white film. And uh, if you're running around with this lens, I think you should stay in the moment. I don't think exposure should really be a factor. I mean, F8 and B there or what have you. Um, so being that you can't use a meter isn't really a huge issue, at least not for me. Um, and if you're using one of the Leica digital cameras, uh, particularly the uh, M240 uh, cameras or the M10 cameras, you actually get live view and you can meter right off the sensor. And that may kind of feel like cheating, but hey, it works. And I love the ability to see exactly what I'm getting because I'm not paying $400, $500 for a 21 millimeter finder to stick on the top of my camera uh, just as a little window. I'm perfectly fine with holding this close to whoever I'm shooting or whatever I'm shooting and kind of guessing at whatever my composition is going to be. I like to think I've got pretty lucky thus far. So uh, yeah, that's fine. I, I'm perfectly fine with the, the rear element sitting back as far as it is. And uh, it's not going to harm any of your sensors. Um, I have not tried this on any other cameras with adapters, so I don't know if this will work on, say, a Sony. Um, I know it won't work with the Fuji uh, film camera because they have APS-C sensors. And uh, this round part right here is too wide to fit in that opening. So if you have a Fuji X camera, this lens isn't going to work for you. Try it at your own risk on a Sony or anything else, but it will work on any Leica digital camera. The other quirk that this lens has is that uh, you're required to use these weird Series 7 filters. I don't know if you guys can see that right there, but they're not screw-in filters. Actually, they, uh, they drop into this massive lens hood. And you gotta line up the two pins right there on the side of the lens, and there you go. This lens hood is huge, it is obnoxious, uh, it doesn't make for the most inconspicuous setup, but it does work. This lens, because of its age, it does tend to flare a ton. And uh, that can be cool too. I mean, if you're looking for those types of effects, I like to look at lenses like this as imperfectly perfect. If it has a quirk, use it. I mean, these lenses weren't meant to be clinically sharp or anything like that. That's not what this is for. I really see lenses like this more like an artist tool, like a paintbrush versus a computer chip where it's supposed to be perfect or what have you. Uh, it, 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 it's not perfect. And I think that's what really makes this lens special. If it were perfect, uh, I don't think I'd care as much. I, Leica does have newer versions of this. They do not focus as close. Um, they are a little bit sharper. They are more or less corrected on the sides where this one's barely noticeable. Um, as far as uh, vignetting or, or whatever distortion you want to nitpick and find. So I guess you could say that I think this lens is well worth the money, particularly if you're in the market for a weird and quirky lens um, and you want to be able to be a little bit more creative. You want to be able to get closer. If you are a rangefinder shooter and you do find that being able to get close to your subjects has been a, a complicated task for you, try this lens out. There is a less expensive F4 version that's a little bit older. I've used both of them. There's not a whole lot of difference between the two. I prefer this one over that one, uh, just as I like the build quality and the shape. It's, it's purely aesthetic. Um, aside from that, the image quality, I don't think you can find a difference. Oh, uh, one other thing. When you are shooting this thing on the M240, it does kind of add some weird purple edges on the side. Uh, you don't have that problem with the M10. Um, but on the M9 and the M240, you will notice some purple fringing. I'll see if I can throw up a couple of pictures so you guys can see that. Um, but yeah, I've been using it on the M10. And a lot of people say you shouldn't make portraits with lenses this wide. I am here to tell you, do it. Yeah, have fun with that. Um, this lens, even though I am not an architectural photographer or a landscape photographer, I love making portraits with this lens. So uh, get one. Go be creative with it. Have fun. Um, just don't get sick, you know, stay six feet apart or don't, 
what do I know? I'm not a marine biologist or anything. Um, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys really enjoyed the photographs. If you want to see more, click that link in the description for my blog and for my Patreon because there are a ton of pictures that I would love to share with you guys, but uh, YouTube will ban me. So um, definitely support this channel, sign up for the Patreon, you'll get stuff that nobody else gets to see. And um, buy one of these, because it's cool. And uh, Life is not sponsoring me and they don't sell these things new, so I don't get a kickback, I just get to see the cool pictures you guys make with them. Um, so yeah, enjoy. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I will be posting another video up about being invisible as a street photographer. And again, it doesn't exist, but we will cover that in more detail uh, in a few days. I'm way too caffeinated right now. Maybe I'll make that video like right now. See ya.